in that. Is that Indiana Jones? Hold on. Let's turn off the TV. <coughs> and by turn off the TV, I mean close the door. Oh, it's already recording. Look at that. Would you just look at it? Welcome to the sweat shop. <coughs> oh, sweat. Sweat. It's like sweat when it squirts out of your body. Welcome to the sweat shop. I'm Jack. I make stuff. Look, this will it's come in for repair. This is an elbow piece for a plate of armor. Er, er. It was sharp. It cut me here, so I drew a smiley face, and then I took this. When fighting in medieval armor with your friends, that's 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 where I'm off. It's down here. Jack's up here. I normally talk here. Jack's up, that's because it's a coke and not like a monster or like a 10 Red Bulls. So something to think about, if you're gonna make armor to fight your friends in, you don't want sharp edges. This thing was a little sharp. I got cut, made a smiley face out of it, and look. It doesn't wink. I'm not even gonna talk to you about how to make that, cause I really would like to show everybody how to make a basic helmet to fight in with stick fighting game stuff. There are many types of helmets you can make. I'm going to make the one where you do not need to weld it. And all you really need is a selection of hammers and a selection of files and a tree stump and a box of 3 8 inch rivets. Be about 100 rivets. This is probably gonna take like Frickin' 20,000 videos to make. First of all, you need to order some steel. I get some of my metal that I use to make armor from other sources via scrap ing. Great way to get free materials to build all kinds of things, but y'all know that. There's a company called Metal Supermarkets in my area, and they'll shear it and they'll make nice shapes, whatever shapes you want. I've ordered this material, a uh, 14 gauge. Basically, if you swing a baseball bat at somebody wearing a helmet made out of 14 gauge steel, it should take a light dent, but you should be safe inside if you pad it with some foam inside. I suggest that if you're just gonna try to make a helmet for the first time, try it out of mild steel. It's easier to drill, easier to work with. You, you end up with a pretty decent thing in the end, so long as you do it right. So, I've got this. I've ordered a bunch of these strapping. I call them strapping because we're gonna make a spanging helm. Spangin' helm! You want the history lesson too? So a spangin' helm is a type of helmet that was a it was fairly common design for a helmet in the early Middle Ages. Spangin' comes from a German word, but I don't speak Germany or Germanic or whatever it is that they speak. I'm from Canada, eh? And I'm pretty sure what it meant was to brace something like to span a distance and support and brace the metal that is the helmet. It was a lot easier to come across smaller pieces of metal back then. You can go to the store and get like a four by eight sheet of 12 gauge steel and take it home. You know, 2000 years ago, that's not happening. It was more commonly used in a helmet than a large piece because they had to forge everything themselves from like an ore, like a chunk of ore. And it would take time to process it into a flat material that they can then make something out of. I know too much about this crap and all you really want to do is see me swing a hammer. So step one, these things come from metal supermarkets. I've ordered them two inch. This is a grinder. Why is a grinder never plugged in? One of these days I'm gonna hardwire my grinder to the wall. Don't use gloves, because if, uh, if you use gloves and you touch your grinding disc, it can suck your hand in. If you just use your bare hands, uh, it's gonna take off chunks of your skin and not suck your hand in. Also wear safety glasses, right? 